small portion of this video is sponsored by Squarespace, the ultimate tool to design your stunning new website. Hey guys, Mark here, and my YouTube office for 2021 is finally finished. You've probably seen a lot of it in a bunch of different angles over the past couple of months, but today I'm gonna show you around, talk about the tech that I have in here, and then show you how I use my space to make my videos. So this is my office. It might not look all that big to you, and that's because it isn't. <laughs> it's 14 feet long by nine and a half feet wide, and I've used almost every square foot of this room as efficiently as I could. The office is divided up into three main sections. The desk where I edit all of my videos, the lounging area where I watch TV when I'm not working, and the filming area where I actually shoot all of my A-roll. Let's start with the desk, because I'd imagine that's what most of you are the most curious about. The desk itself was sent over to me by Jarek and his team called Eustalarzi. Sorry if I butchered that pronunciation. They did an absolutely fantastic job with this mid-century modern style desk, and I highly, highly recommend that you buy a desk from them if you want something in this style. Every inch of this desk is well made, and it's honestly my favorite desk I've ever owned. Link in the description down below if you're interested in a desk like that. The centerpiece of this desk set up is my 2019 i9 iMac that I've had for a couple of years now. It serves me very well, but to be honest, I can't wait to replace it with one of the new iMacs that are rumored to be coming later this year. My i9 iMac is great in the performance department, but with the massive chin and bezels around this thing, it looks pretty old even though it actually isn't. Below it is my Grove made iMac riser in walnut. I'm a pretty tall guy, so I need something like this to get my iMac up to a height that's ergonomically friendly. There's also a couple of other Grove made accessories on this desk too, like this pen holder and keyboard tray for my Apple Magic Keyboard. They make great stuff and adding splashes of walnut to the top of this white desk looks great in my opinion. To the right of my iMac, I have the headphones I use to edit all of my videos, the AirPods Max, and they're sitting on a cheap aluminum stand I found on Amazon. By the way, all the things that I talk about today will have links in the description down below if you're interested in picking any of it up yourself. Hope that helps. While this desk is pretty cool by itself, I did add one product to make it just a little bit more tech friendly. If I place my phone just above my keyboard, it immediately begins wireless charging. Inside this middle shelf is the wireless charger from InvisChi, which wirelessly charges phones through objects like a desk. It means I don't have to string any cables across my desk. The wireless charger is completely invisible. Oh, and the chair. Almost forgot about it somehow, even though I'm sitting on it. This is the Kin Chair by Autonomous. They make mid-range office chairs that are ergonomic, and they look pretty nice too. Then there's the lounging area, and right off the bat, I know what you're thinking. Mark, that TV is just way too high on the wall. And you'd be right. This is the Samsung Frame TV, and it's meant to look like a piece of artwork on the wall. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to mount the TV at this height. Art is supposed to be hung at eye level. When it's set to its ambient mode, the Frame TV will sense the light in the room and automatically adjust the TV's brightness to make it look like it's a still painting on the wall. And this actually does work fairly well. You can still tell it's a TV and the Cable hider that's on the wall is a dead giveaway, but it's definitely looking a lot nicer than a giant black void that hangs on your wall. I think the bigger problem here is that the TV stand that I bought was too low. I had intended to buy a much taller credenza to go here and store all of my stuff in and fill all the space on the wall, but because of the low supply during the pandemic, this was the only one in my price range that I could get. On top of the TV stand are two HomePod minis paired in stereo that are actually used as the TV's speakers. I use the Frame TV with my Apple TV 4K so that I can set the speaker output to my HomePod minis, and they do sound pretty good definitely better than the TV's built-in speakers. The HomePod minis are also what I use to turn on and turn off the lamps on either side of my couch. They're hooked up to a couple of Wi-Fi enabled smart plugs that interface with Apple's HomeKit, so when I ask Siri to turn off my lights, the lights in the room turn off. I could have gone with Philips Hue bulbs here, but I chose instead to go with color accurate LED bulbs since I was gonna be shooting a lot in this room and I didn't want the Philips Hue bulbs to throw off the white balance of my cameras. Most of the furniture in this room minus the desk is from Wayfair. During the pandemic, it's actually surprisingly difficult to get furniture, especially in this mid-century modern style that I like so much. Wayfair had the most stock here in Canada and it was fairly affordable, so it was more or less a no-brainer. Before I talk about how I shoot all of my videos and 
store all of my gear, I just wanna take a quick minute to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I've used Squarespace many times over the years and it's great. It's an all-inclusive platform that comes with pretty much everything you need to build any kind of website, whether it be a blog, an online store, a portfolio, or anything else you can think of. They've got a bunch of features and they make it very, very easy to build a website that both looks great and performs well too. They've got search engine optimization tools for ensuring your site gets picked up on Google, email campaigns for spreading your messages to the masses, e-commerce tools for setting up an online store, and a whole bunch of other stuff to get your website off the ground. I'm currently working on a website for my Tech Rewind series where I can make blog posts about each phone I review, and working with the Squarespace platform has been very simple and actually a lot of fun to play around with. Head on over to Squarespace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a custom domain. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now let's get back to the office door. When I'm ready to shoot some A-roll, the third section of the room closest to the door gets used. The first thing I do is place a bunch of sound dampening panels all over the wall behind the camera to help reduce the echo in the room. Then I set up my tripod and camera, followed by my Godox UL150 key light, and then finally my Sennheiser MKE 600 gets boomed slightly above the space where I sit. Then I just push my coffee table over to the side, drag over my chair, and I'm ready to shoot. It's not the most efficient way to set up for shooting, but it is the best way to make use of this space and still have a clean area at the end of the day. When I'm done shooting the A-roll and I wanna start getting B-roll shots of the product I'm reviewing, I use pretty much every surface in this room to get different shots. I designed this room that way so that no matter where you point the camera, I can still get a fairly clean shot without needing to move too many things around. You might recognize this corner of the desk in front of the tree, for example, or the surface of my coffee table for top-down shots. Sometimes I just use the area in front of my desk to get a nice shot, or I lay my phone against one of my lamps. It's a small room, so I use a lot of close-ups in different areas all over the place to get a wide diversity of shots. The great thing about this room is that even though it's small, it has plenty of spaces to store things when I'm finished filming. To the right of my desk is a small closet where I store a lot of my gear. I have a maximum cabinet and pegboard in there to keep everything organized. A lot of my filming equipment and the phones that I review go in the bottom, and all of my batteries and chargers are hung on the pegboard with plenty of room for expansion. To power all of the chargers for the various filming equipment like my cameras, my monitors, and lights, I have this six port USB-A power hub from Aki. I just plug all the chargers into that and everything gets charged. Nice and neat. I can use the top of the cabinet for some cool shots like the intro to the OnePlus 6T Tech Rewind video, or I can just use it as an extra bit of workspace every now and again. While I can store a lot of the gear that I have in this small closet, there's not a lot of room for the bigger stuff. Fortunately for me, this room has another larger storage area attached to it. This area is meant for the unit's hot water boiler, but it's great for storing a lot of the larger film gear like my light stands, my C-stands, tripods, and other stuff. These two storage areas are what keeps this office area looking clean when I'm not actively shooting. I find that if my workspace isn't clean, it kind of stresses me out a little, so I'm glad that I can pack everything away when I'm finished filming for a very clean area. And that's my YouTube office. Hopefully you got some enjoyment out of this video or even some ideas as to how to structure or restructure your own spaces. And if you like this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to support my channel. And as always, have a great day.